Well, they're at it again when it comes to the elimination of the stretch IRA and the RMD controversy and conversation. They've punted yet again. What a surprise. We'll explain more this week here on the podcast. This is Phil's Tax Hacks and Other Retirement Facts. Welcome into Phil's Tax Hacks and Other Retirement Facts with CPA and personal financial specialist, Phil Putney. Now let's get rolling with today's show. Hey, everybody. Welcome into the podcast. Phil and I here to talk about uh, penalty relief, which sounds great, you know, for inherited withdrawals, inherited accounts, uh, maybe giving that uh, IRA or that, uh, is it just for 401ks or IRAs or is it for both? Or IRAs, annuities. I mean, it's in, yeah, it, it's anything any that it. has uh, yeah, uh, the required minimum distribution where you now have the 10 year rule that you have to take the money okay. out of. So, so yeah. we'll set the stage real quick and then we'll just kind of tell you what's going on, which basically is they don't know what the hell's going on either. <laughs> So. Yeah, they, they still haven't got the final regulations figured out. So yeah, even yeah. though we're now, you know, four years into this. Four, yeah, it's, exactly. It's ridiculous. Well, but let's set the stage. By the time them, we so. hit the 10th year, it's going to be done. It so. might be done. Yeah, exactly. Let's set the stage for them here. We'll put the link to the CNC, CNBC article in there as well. But basically, there was a thing called the stretch IRA, right? So you, if you left, you know, your, your, one of your kids money in an IRA, million dollars, just make it easy. They had their lifetime to pull that money out and do their thing with it, right? They got rid of that with some of the Secure Act changes and they said, no, you got to pull it all out within 10 years. The controversy has been about the RMDs of that if the person was doing it. So explain that for us. Yeah. So like Mike was saying, originally it used to be if you were other than a spouse, um, spouse has their own kind of special rules, a minor child uh, or a child or a, a beneficiary with disabilities are kind of the exceptions to this rule. So if you were other than one of those, when the Secure Act came out, they introduced this new 10-year rule. So they got rid of the stretch where you used to be able to stretch it out over your lifetime, take RMDs based on a separate RMD table for inherited IRAs, but you could take it out over an extended period of time. They said, no, we're going to give you 10 years. So, so liquidated that, million dollars within 10 years. We'll just use that as right. a setup, right? Yeah. And that, that was, you know, I always said, well, that was how they paid for Bunting out that or you know moving out the the um, RMD ages, they're going to push that out, but they're going to force now beneficiaries to take it out quicker. So when they first introduced this, it was just that, right? It was a ten year rule. Everyone interpreted it based on the only other time frame rule we had like that relating to IRAs, which was for trust. That was a five year rule, and that rule is it has to be liquidated in five years. No RMDs by the fifth year; it has to be gone. So it's up to you. However you want to do it evenly, take everything in that fifth year, whatever it is. So everyone looked at it and said, oh, okay, we have 10 years to take it out, meaning I can take it evenly. I can do whatever I want as long as it's gone by the end of the 10th year. Cool. IRS came out and said, well, that's not really what we were thinking, you know, so of course. So they, they came out with these proposed regulations that said, if you inherited an IRA 401k from somebody who had already started RMDs. So they were already at their required beginning date, 70, 70 and a half, 72, three, whatever it was then. So they started RMDs, that spigot was turned on, so to speak. You as the beneficiary had to continue RMDs on the inherited RMD table during that 10 year timeline, but still had to liquidate it within 10 years. So that's been the whole controversy since this come out is, what do we do? Do we have to take RMDs? Do we not? You know, we all know that if we don't take RMDs, then there's the penalty, right? Which they did reduce that. And it's not a 50%. Now it's 25%, you know, or 10% if you fix it within two years. But that's the whole controversy is, okay, do I take them? Do I not? We don't know the rule. And they don't know. Clear. because and so they're, and they don't know. So, what so they've doing punted saying, it again, right? Right. So they said, okay, well, if you didn't take the RMD for 2024, we're going to waive the penalty. So they're, they're kind of punting this down the road. And I mean, this is a discussion I've had with each client that we've kind of walked through this and, and said, this is the muddy water we live in, right? Here, here's the unclarity of where we're at. We cannot take the RMD. There could be a penalty. We don't know. So they've given us the last, I think it's the last three years, they've, they've punted this and said, okay, no penalty, right? So we, we've kind of got a clean slate so far. But at some point, they might come in and say, okay, well, you have to take an RMD and you're going to have to make up all those years that you missed. You know, so not that there would be a penalty, but there's going right, to be a Right, but you still have to pull the money, right? Boom. Right. Yeah. You know, so we don't know. 
Yeah. And it's really, so this is always just the discussion we have with clients and you to have with your advisor, if this is where you're at, what do you want to do, right? Do you want to punt that down the road and take the risk of, well, they're never going to force the RMD, so let's just wait and take it out by the end of the 10th year? Do we want to, how do we want to do it? Let me clarify that a little bit for folks, just in case they're getting a little confused. So if you still got the, if you got the money, you still got the 10 years, they're not making you pull that required minimum distribution each year. But as of right now, the rule still says the money must still all be gone by the end of the 10 years, right? They haven't changed that. So that's still there, right? right. So if you're just making the decision not to pull anything out, you're procrastinating that till maybe the 10th year, that's still an option then you could be you could be delaying yourself for a bigger RMD, possibly an RMD, right? I mean, the unknown there is that when they do figure this out, this year, next year, whatever it is, are, what are they going to do? Are, are they going to, you know, for the RMDs that should have been taken in 2020, you know, one, two, three, four, are they going to say, okay, well, now you've got to make all those up in this year. You know, so now you've got a big, big RMD this year and continue RMDs. Or are they going to say, okay, we're going to just kind of forget that you have to, you know, start RMDs? Not, we don't know. You know, and that's I mean, really one would the, hope, <laughs> yeah. one would hope that they're going to go. Well, what, what we can't retro. I mean, they can. They can do anything they want, but hopefully, they won't retro do this. But with with the tax, excuse me, not the tax, but with the debt being the way that it is, right. you would think that they would get off their took us and make a decision because you'd think they'd want that revenue. Well, you know, again, not, not to paint the IRS in a bad light, but personally, the way I look at it is this. I mean, you we, we know the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act's expiring in a couple of years, right? And I was getting ready tax to ask. Rates, tax rates are going up. I was getting so ready to ask, like, is that okay, why they're well, maybe waiting? we kick this can down the road a little bit till the rates go up, and then we're going to force people to take it out at a higher rate. That's what I was, yeah, that's what I, I was I walking I mean, you towards. Hey, it's what the rules are, right? Yeah. So yeah. again, and this is all discussions that we have with clients, if you're in that scenario to say, okay, technically, yes. I would recommend probably taking an RMD just because it's the safer bet. But yeah. I mean, if you're in the highest bracket today, cause you're still working, you're at a, you know, a significant job today and it's putting you into the 32% bracket. And when you retire, you're not going to be anywhere near that. Well, maybe it doesn't make sense. Let's roll the dice, so to speak, and kind of kick the can down the road to a year that you're not going to have that higher wage and, and maybe do something that. So it really comes down to a tax planning decision. I mean, if that's not your case with the the tax laws changing, maybe it would have made sense to take it out earlier. Because remember, this isn't a I can't I I can't take more than this is a minimum. Right. I have to take this amount. So, All right, Phil. So I got to ask you. I got to play the devil's advocate here. Uh, so somebody listening is going, well, then I don't even want the freaking account. So how do I get rid of it? How do I, how do I get rid of that IRA or not leave it to my heirs? Do I go ahead and start doing conversions? Do I convert it over to a Roth and just pay it now and get it over with? Or what well, is right. the option? So this, if you're talking about you as the owner still alive, looking at what happens for my kids. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, And that's frankly a discussion we have with a lot of our clients, the Roth conversion planning and we've actually had with some of their parents who are in those very later stages of life. In fact, I'm working with one right now that, you know, his mom is 90. She's substantial amount sitting in IRAs. And we've been helping her convert over the last two or three years because she's never going to use it. She doesn't need the IRAs right. now. And, and then why, why and leave this mess for these kids? Right. And now they're why leave forced, it? Right. You know, so it, it's, you have to look at the big picture, you know, for, not only just you, but ultimately for the kids, you know, or whoever you're leaving the money to, you know, and again, that's, it's a discussion with clients we have of, you know, do you want to help hedge against taxes that an heir would have to pay? You know, at the end of the day, who do you want to get the most money? You want the kids or the IRS is really what it comes down to. You know, if we're trying to minimize the amount that the IRS is going to get, that might mean you may make more in tax payments today, reposition things so that, yeah, you're in a better position, but ultimately, if there is money left, now the kids aren't forced into this big burden with a, an RMD or taking money out in that 10-year timeline, which, again, if you look at when typically you inherit money, you know, usually that's kind of in your later stages of your career, the highest, you know, your peak earning years. So it comes at kind of the worst time. So for, from, a, from a tax standpoint, so. I guess two ways of looking at this then. Is if you're still around and you were thinking about leaving an IRA behind to your to your heirs, it may be worth it to 
talk to your advisor pretty darn quickly about what you want to do. Have a strategy. Yep. If you've already inherited one and you're dealing with this, make sure you're talking with your advisor about how to be as proactive as possible since the IRS doesn't know what the hell they're doing. And that way you can either to Phil's point, hedge on the side of caution just in case they change that their mind or, you know, We'll just wait and see and just continue to roll the dice. Maybe you're pulling money annually right now just to kind of get the count started depleted down right. uh, and you roll the dice on the RMD big chunk later or not. Right. So, or maybe yeah. you're waiting till the ninth and 10th year to pull the whole thing. I don't know, but either and way, it, it, get yeah, a strategy. it kind of comes down to your strategy and tax wise. You know, maybe that makes the most sense for you. Cause those are going to be a yeah. lower earning years after retirement, whatever the case is. Well, the, get the, one, <laughs> get, a strategy. Yeah, get, a, get a strategy, a plan. I mean, the downside yeah. to the, the inherited IRA is you cannot convert it. Right. So that's right. People think, Oh, I'll just move it to my Roth. Sorry, you can't do that. Because so, it's I mean, inherited it, one, you can't do that, right? Yeah, so the only person that can convert an account is the owner. Is the owner. So if you're not the owner, if you're a beneficiary, it's too late. You're kind of locked yeah. into what that owner did with the account, yeah. which if they left it an IRA, you inherit an IRA. And you can't make the argument, well, they're gone, now I'm the owner. No. You, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. If you're a surviving you're the spouse, owner. well, that's a whole other scenario because a surviving spouse can make it their own. Now they're the owner and they can convert. So they've got a different path that they can work down. So, right. um, yeah. but I mean, the, the RMDs also apply to, apply to Roth, you know, so don't in the whole 10 year rule. So, I mean, it's similar scenario there. The difference though, is there's not a tax burden. Right. Correct. You know, so if you, if you inherited a Roth, now we're looking at this whole RMD thing. I would say, don't take them because at this, you don't need the money unless you need the money. But if you don't need the money, they're not going to, they've already said they're not going to penalize us for not taking it. So don't take it. Just let it sit and grow tax free in the Roth as long as you can. Okay. There you go. Because now, yeah. Okay. Worst case scenario, they come back, you know, in the fifth year and say, okay, well, we're now going to force RMDs and you're going to have to make it up. Okay. So now you're going to have to take a bigger chunk that year, but it's not a tax burden. And you had five more years in the Roth to grow. So. Well, if you're confused, don't worry. They are too. And they, so yeah, the IRS hasn't got it figured out yet either. So, so we'll put a link to this article in there. Ed Slot is uh, who's a big IRA guy. He's been uh, he's talked about it in there. He's actually interviewed on that. So we'll throw that article up in the show notes. But at the end of the day, get a strategy when it comes to dealing with either leaving an IRA behind to a family member when you pass on, or if you've inherited one, uh, some things to make sure that you're dealing with on that front because it is right there and. Like all things, when it comes to our financial situation, we want to be more proactive than reactive. So do yourself a favor, get on the calendar, have a conversation, reach out to Phil and his team at philstaxhacks.com. That's philstaxhacks.com. Subscribe to us on Apple, uh, Spotify, YouTube as well. I'll uh, just click the little subscribe button on whatever platform you like using. Uh, and we will see you next time here on Phil's Tax Hacks and other retirement facts. Investment advisory services offered through AFS Wealth Management. The content of this program is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. Investments and or investment strategies involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. There is no assurance that any investment strategy will achieve its objectives.